Hello and welcome, this is Synoptic and I will be doing number 3 of my Shogun 2 Total War commentaries. This is a 2v2 on a map which I can't remember. There appears to be two blue balls and a long floppy blue thing in between them, which is nice. But this is a battle list game, not a matchmaking one. And I'm playing with the number one Shogun 2 player in terms of coming up with every excuse in the book to not come up with a commentary himself. B.W. Angelos. About a year ago, there was a video with Ange in it, and I stated that it wouldn't be too long before I'll do a commentary with him, and it's good that I keep my word, because one year isn't that long, huh? Even though it's probably going to take a bit longer than that. I think the major reason why there wasn't a duel was because of the hardware. We can't really do duels with the Napoleon game and this one, even though I think one of us will be upgrading soon. Now in terms of our opponents, we will be labelling them red and yellow. I'm against red and Angie's up against yellow. I'm not going to state their names, you can see them if you want to, enlarged. But one does have a funny name, I had to laugh at that. Looking at Red's army, we have a fire rocket. In the actual game I didn't see that. And in this battle, in my one, we're going to go one at a time. We'll watch my battle and then watch Angie's as they both happen at the same time. First comes the skirmish, and I thought I had the advantage here. He had three bow monks, but I had five archers, like varying samurais. I think one bow monk, plus Yari Ashigaru mid shield. He was actually shooting at that, and I still lost that fight here. Now, Ange did tell me I was going to lose that range fight, but I was quite adamant in pushing ahead with my numerical superiority. Now what's going to happen is half my men aren't going to be shooting, and I didn't find this issue until I had this game. This game actually happened about a month ago, or more. So basically I charge up my Yari Ashigaru unit, it gets shot at, that's nice and good. Whereas all my units aren't fully firing at max capacity. So we got like a few at the front shooting, la di da, and they're all getting shot at by three bow monks doing flame on and also coupling that with some fire rocket action. Now, after this battle, make sure you check your archers. Just zoom in, make sure they're shooting. If they're not, reposition them. You can probably fix this by doing an attack click, although you have some kind of rearranging happen. Now I get quite angry at this result. I was quite sure that I would win this part, but I did not. I used my Yari Ashigaru's to simply charge the enemy, and what I would theoretically do a full frontal assault. But in a tactics game there are changes and you have to adapt to them. When I advanced out came some cavalry which should appear shortly from now. So there you see it in the frame. Instead of attacking I will then fall back. Although my opponent then makes a mistake in which he has advancing units moving alone. So I threw that Yari Ashigaru into their army and his advance in the middle was halted. So he has an segmented attack, and this will ultimately be very fatal for him. I fall back behind my matchlocks, I have two of them doing some very accurate fire, in which he will continue to charge in. He's now within range of my matchlocks and my remaining bows. And the remaining front units get whittled down very quickly and get handled very easily by my melee units. And I also have the ability to start flanking with melee units as well as cavalry. You'll see that shortly. So he's doing attack moves, he's trying to support his flanks by moving them into large blobs. So he's got two blobs. He has some, I think a great guard unit over there. That was his cavalry that initially stopped my attack. He has his general inside his army. I then have a flanking katana to hit his back line. He retrieves his general, which is a good move. You'd never want that to die. I have lost that in some games and your army will just rout. So what has Red done? He has won his range fight without much trouble. Satisfied with this result, he then moves in for the melee. He then faces a few throwaway units which dismantles his front line and attacks in separate formations. Those units are then whittled down and then he is then supporting them with his remaining units. Using those units for support, he loses his maneuverability and initiative. He then gets surrounded by my cavalry and katanas. Without his front line, his back line only consists of a few 
bows and I think a Yari a Shigaru who then route after the general dies. So in summary of my fight, just watch your archers, make sure they're shooting and doing their job. If they're not, reposition them fast. The only way you're going to see this is either by watching the actual arrows fly in the sky or zooming in. Through that you could also see other possibilities. If you win the range fight, that doesn't mean go into the melee. Keep using your range units, keep using them if your opponent doesn't have any left. Now to begin Angelos' fight, he has positioned a spear inside the woods to the left you can see there. Now you can't really tell but that is the end of that map, you can't really go any further. So there's not going to be much in terms of sneak attacks from Yellow, he's just locking that place down. Speaking of sneak attacks, Yellow does have something up his sleeve later on. But much like Red's case, he just decides to do a frontal charge. I think he does have the range superiority as well but he doesn't really use it to his advantage. That unit being shot there is practically the mid shield that served in my army. Unlike Red however, Angelos does decide to change his targets when they go into range, so the mid shield ultimately fails there. However, unlike my mid shield, he just sends him straight in for the melee and then starts another charge with the wedge formation cavalry. I think spears are nearby and they will get hammered quite hard. There's a Naginata warrior monk. Although the wedge formation does do a good job of penetrating that line and going through, although it does end up getting stuck. So already you can see a lack of flow. There are just units being thrown in with not much support with the remaining yellow army. This also leaves a lot of areas vulnerable and possibilities for counterattack with Angelos. As you can see here, there's some bow monks getting charged by cavalry. The same cavalry can then push through and attack other vulnerable units nearby with the main unit army still quite far away. So alone each move can be considered quite good, you are disrupting units by throwing a melee unit at some range units, you are disrupting a battle line by charging it with cavalry and wedge formation, although they need to flow and they need to do other moves afterwards, you can't just do a few moves and then keel over and die. Or probably to put that better, mainly just to have your hopes high. I think there was a, a ninja unit, that was the trick up yellow sleeve, and you can see it here. Although there aren't many high quality units nearby for that ninja unit to try and kill. Now with the higher shot here, you can see my example. You cannot do something drastic like that without some support. So by the third unit he loses, he does realize that he needs to put on a full attack and do his all in. However, at this point, he has lost 3 units compared to Angelos' 0. So when that ninja came out of nowhere, Angelos then reacted by bringing all his units in, into the main vicinity, such as that spear unit that was initially in the woods nearby. He then condensed his army to get ready for this big assault coming in now. So already, by the time Yellow has fully committed to this battle, he is numerically disadvantaged. Angelos has more units he can spare, more units he can use to flank and maneuver, more units he can hold with. On the left is another cavalry charge that breaks through some lines, although going with that numerical advantage, Ange has a lot to spare. He can turn matchlocks around, he can use other units to hold this cavalry up and just delay it while it's being shot. Also drawing similarities to red, yellow does make a good use of his general abilities, inspiring, rallying when needed to, making his units stronger and better in morale when he absolutely has to. So in summary of Angelus's fight, it's just basic cost-benefit analysis. You need to know what you're trying to invest in. What are you going to get out of this attack? What are you going to lose if you send one in on its own to do a big attack? Yes, you might kill the general, but if you don't, that's nothing. It's a big waste. So that's about it. GG to everyone, and thanks for watching.